In the next three days, we're about to put a year and a half worth of meat in the freezer and at the same time, teaching people how to do it for themselves. The Coonies have been in this spot for about a week and now we gotta move in this other spot. They ate all the clover, so much clover on this spot. I mean, with this many Coonies, we need to move them at least once a week. We made a lane with this one and then opening up the door. Come on, Alvaro, you first. Get in there. She knows the routine. <laughs> she knows it. Good job. Come on, babies. Come on. You got it. Keep moving. There we go. Pigs just moved over there. They were over here. Now let's move these meat chickens. I don't always keep these chickens living in this coop. We li do like to take them out and we don't do that till they get a little bit older. And it also depends if we have a free net available. It's also more work to let them out. <laughs> They're like, what? What are you doing? You're opening the door for us? <laughs> Come on, chickens. Chicken nuggets. Come on. We have some little coony pig poops. And uh, I'm putting the feed on top of them. I want, the, I want these chickens to dig into the poop. Hey, chicken. Spread it around. Some of them get it. There's still some in there. They're like, I don't know. I'm not sure about that, guys. I think I'll stay safe in here. This is the pig netting. Don't tell them, but they can actually fly over. If these were the Cornish crosses, they definitely could not fly over the pig net. These are Murray's Big Red Broilers from McMurray Hatchery. My favorite meat chicken to raise. Buena buena, chicken dinner. At this point, they are a huge investment. We fed them all the feed, moving them, all the labor it takes. They're gonna be 12 weeks before we put them in our freezer. Putting a net around them, you know, yeah, it's more work, but it's also a peace of mind because even though this never happened to me, I've never had or lost a chicken in these coops. But I also know it's only a matter of time before that happens. But with the netting, and then I'll electrify it, that gives me a little bit uh, better sleep at night. We still have a couple more days, so we have some folks here teaching a workshop. But today, what's Lorraine doing? <laughs> Everyone wants to know. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm making strawberry jam. So there's a place locally that sells organic strawberries and I'm putting them away. I bought three gallons, so I'm probably gonna do a double batch, maybe a triple batch, we'll see. This time last year, my plan was to have a permanent chicken processing station. Well, it didn't happen this year, so I'm gonna say it again. Next year, we're gonna have a permanent chicken processing station. But then I realized putting up a permanent station is not really a priority. We're gonna try something new this time. We have these chicken crates. These are used, I picked them up. Thanks, Mike. Mike had some extra ones. Really, the only purpose for these is to hold chickens. We're all set up, easy ups, tables, chicken plucker, kill cones, scalder, the crawl in cooler. Strawberry jam is done. I got about 10 jars. I actually had two more jars, but um, you can see some of the remains here. I didn't, I don't think I screwed them on tight enough because they wiggled themselves out and so the lids popped off. But that's okay because we have 
10 jars plus another jar in the fridge that wasn't all the way full, didn't meet the headspace criteria, so I just put it in the fridge. Today's video is about chicken butchering, putting meat in the freezer for our family and also teaching a workshop, teaching others teaching others how to do this so they could do this for their family. I want to show people that you can do this in your backyard. If this dude can do this, you can do it. So what's your name, where are you from? Eric from Ashland, Massachusetts. Massachusetts, okay, you flew here? I did. Wow, guys, wow. I'm happy you're here, man. I, me, you. <laughs> I am too, I'm happy I'm here. What brings you here today? Uh, my wife and I have egg layers and thinking about meat chickens, later this year, next year, and uh, just want to have the skill set to see the process out. I do want to ask, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Are you going to bring your chicken home on the plane? No. Because you could take a chicken home. You know, somebody's done that. Really? They brought a oh. cooler, Man. and they flew, they came from Utah. Mitch, oh Mitch, yeah, he came and took a chicken home, and he ate it that night. So. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm doing saying. it wrong, I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. Now, the reason why I want to chop this off is because when I go to bag it. Almost done. Look at that. We're all filled up. Ice, water. This is their final resting spot. Got him. What are you guys' names? Where are you from? Shirley and Brian Bergstrom from Lugoff, South Carolina. You guys have chickens of your own? Meat chickens? Not yet. Yeah, okay. meat chickens, just six layers. Well, that's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we just had a break and now we're doing quality control and then bagging up the birds. We started at 7.30 and finished at 10.30. I finally got a resource for heat shrink bags for our poultry. I'll leave a link down below so some of you guys, if you guys are, are following us and you guys want to try some of this, these bags, done, made in USA, I'll leave that link below. Uh, my name's Randy, I'm from Lincolnton, North Carolina. Shirley Ann from Colloway. Now you guys are related. Yep, mm -hmm. that's my daughter. That's awesome. So who or who signed up who? Uh, my wife signed up all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys have meat chickens or why you choose to learn how to do this? Getting ready to process our own meat chickens. Yeah. Wanted to make sure we went through it with some folks that knew what they were doing before we did it ourselves. Very cool. And you guys mentioned you have friends that are doing it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go yep. back home and show them or? Yeah, go back home and show them whenever they're ready to process theirs. Yeah. Now that they're all bagged up, Lorraine's gonna show how to piece out a chicken. It's part of what we do here when we show people how to do this for themselves. This is a leg core. You can break it down even further. You would just slice right here. See this fat line right here? That's telling you that you can slice right there and there's a joint there. And then we let the chicken rest for about 48 hours. The next two days, we're gonna be doing two more workshops. So we're not done yet. That was a good afternoon. We're done by noon. You know, the day's not over yet. Now I need to move some meat chickens down there and prepare for tomorrow's workshop. First time raising these meat chickens right here in this tractor. And we're on top of our property. And rather than me having to move this coop all the way down there, which I normally do, I figured I have these crates and we're just gonna put them in here and then move them to that empty coop so that way they'll be ready to go tomorrow. It might be hard to see this in the video, but look how green this spot is. Look how green the spots are. You can tell where we moved this coop because of that. I mean, green, green. We'll, we'll keep this coop down here, but we still have another batch of meat chickens that we're gonna move up here. Come on, chicken babies. I know. Chicken in a basket. Chicken in a basket. Eight chickens. Eight chickens in here. Ooh. It's quite
quite heavy. A little bit extra work. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It just depends how your setup is. You know, it was that wasn't bad. That's very doable. I, I know. I like the idea of having a taller chicken tractor, so that way you could go in there and grab a bird. I mean, if we left them in here, you know, they'd probably be hot, miserable until we butcher them tomorrow. So it, I just think it's just too long of a wait. I guess you could do it tonight. Put them in a, some crates. Yeah, that's that's doable, but. I kind of like this idea better of just letting them hang out in this and then we go in there and grab one tomorrow when we're ready. The good news for today is that we don't have to break down and we, have to, we don't have to put anything away today because we're doing it again for the next two days. Good morning guys, we're just getting started. Today is day three, three days in a row of showing people how to butcher a chicken for themselves and for their family. Today is one of our bigger workshops. We're having about 12 people here today. There's some early birds out there. We get a lot of, of nice people who want to start early. But we're not gonna end up saving. Some, sometimes people might say, oh, I, I want the feet for my dog. Um. So that's a, a lung remover. Let's see how it works. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so what Jason said is to go in <laughs> and you're trying to just grab the lung with the teeth yeah and then pull it out right there and that's the lung there you go that, that instead of using if you don't have any fingernails because typically you would use your fingernails to get in there and grab the lungs out but they actually have a tool that's meant for that and i have to say jason and lorraine are awesome <laughs> <laughs> i didn't pay i didn't pay him to say that <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the hundred dollar bill just slip right, over there right, a second right. ago. But you, you can pay him. So what's your name? Where you're from? Uh, my name is Chris Taylor. I go by Chuck. I'm from Marion, North Carolina, just down the road. Uh, we've got a little small farm that we're trying to make, and uh, we've got egg layers right now, but are looking for meat providers at some point. So I need to know how to learn a new skill right. basically so the uh, more practice the better <laughs> so um cool so i figured i'd get as much out of it as, as i could yeah so we're almost done butchering these chickens and then we're gonna bag and in uh quality control but where are you guys from Sagan, texas and what, what are you guys doing here learning how to butcher chickens and how to process them and then how to bag them for our home and our family do you have uh meat chickens right now no we have um, chickens are legs. Okay. We get our meat chickens in August. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So that's why we came here to learn. <laughs> I'm Amy. I'm from East Tennessee. Nice. Kayla from Shady Valley, Tennessee. Now you guys got meat chickens at home? Yes. Yes. We got 44 <laughs> meat birds and 15 turkeys. So I guess that's why you're here. That's yes. exactly why we're here. <laughs> Have you ever done it before? No. Nope. Okay. First time today. So what do you think? It actually wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. we, we got this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. We got the best teachers. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, yeah. He's done. An unexpected thing happens when you have a bunch of strangers working together at one of these workshops. They meet each other, conversate, and then sometimes they actually live closer to each other than what they think. Because it turns out they're neighbors and they never would have met otherwise. <laughs> And as we do more of these workshops, it's pretty neat to see and be aware of that. And the people that come, oh my gosh, they are so nice and kind and just easy to talk to and just really cool people. We have our online chicken processing courses that we offer to help some of you guys who do not have access to taking a hands-on workshop. Also, if you do have that chance, whether it be someone local near you or you want to take a workshop from us, I highly suggest doing it because there's nothing to it but to do it. I mean, you got to get your hands dirty in order to actually learn how to do it because 
honestly, the videos and stuff, they're great. Books are great, but there's nothing like feeling, feeling stuff. You can check out our website and sign up to our newsletter, which we'll notify folks on when our next processing hands-on classes are. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.